20 young and middle-aged policemen died of intensive illness and 15 were members of the Communist Party of China. Largest in decade, 5.5 magnitude earthquake strikes Shanghai. The anti-CP infiltration exhibition is held every week in Flushing. China, Russia send warships close to Alaska, prompting strong U.S. response. The nearly 10 billion funds for post-disaster reconstruction in Hainan have problems, who move the life-saving money of ordinary people. Devastating floods, bridges severed and rare books destroyed in Hailingjiang and Shuazhou. Severe rainstorms in mainland China have shifted from the North China region to the Northeast. In the past two days, Hailongjiang province has been affected with some bridges collapsing due to the flooding. In addition, in Jiaquang, Hebei province, where the rain has eased, a publisher's book warehouse was submerged, resulting in all the rare and out-of-print books being damaged by water, turning it into a cultural disaster. People reported seeing the West Dathai Bridge in Wuchang Township, Hailongjiang province, being partially washed away by floodwaters, leaving only half of the bridge intact. Fortunately, there have been no reported casualties, but another bridge collapse incident the day before nearly caused casualties. The heavy rain center, which started in mainland China on August 2nd, has now shifted to Jilin and Heilongjiang provinces in the northeast. Within just two days, more than 25 weather stations in the region reported over 200 millimeters of torrential rain. Meanwhile, the rainfall in North China has finally eased, but the aftermath of the disaster and relief efforts are just beginning. In Hebe's Yushu Ho, a cultural catastrophe occurred when a book warehouse belonging to a publishing company was flooded, destroying millions of books, including valuable and rare editions. The losses are immense, and the flooded books cannot be salvaged and are now considered useless. The overall economic loss is estimated to be in the tens of millions of RMB, with a market value of over 100 million RMB. The water is still over 2 meters deep, making it impossible to access the warehouse. The situation is similar in other areas of Hebei, where floodwaters have not yet receded. Rescue workers are navigating the flooded streets using rubber boats to reach the worst affected areas. At the same time, Typhoon Canoe is affecting the coastal areas of Zhejiang's Tizi, bringing high waves up to 10 meters. Fortunately, the typhoon is changing direction, but there are concerns that it might cause further disasters in other provinces on the mainland. 2,000 almost policemen died of intensive illness and 15 were members of the Communist Party of China. In the past two months, at least 20 young and middle-aged police officers under the age of 60 have died in mainland China, with at least 15 of them being members of the Chinese Communist Party CCP. Among the deceased, the youngest was only 23 years old, and 10 of them were under 50 years old. According to incomplete statistics, since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic CCP virus in early 2020 in mainland China, hundreds of young and middle-aged police officers have died each year. Wu Yang, a CCCP member and the director of the Huashu Railway Police Station of the Taiyuan Railway Public Security Bureau in Shaanxi Province, and a Level 1 police officer died on the morning of July 27, 2023, during work due to a sudden illness at the age of 34. Also at the same time, Zhao Huawei, also a CCP member and the director of the Zhangshan Police Station of the Baiji Public Security Bureau in Gizhou Province, died on July 24, 2023, during his duty at the police station due to a sudden illness. Despite medical rescue efforts, he passed away on July 26, 2023, at the age of 38. There are more cases, but for the sake of time, we can only look at two cases. During the past three years, China has seen hundreds of young and middle-aged police officers die. According to the so-called Jindun Feng Bei statistics, in 2022, there were 346 cases of young and middle-aged police officers' deaths, including 17 under the age of 30, 64 between the ages of 30 and 39, and 120 between the ages of 40 and 49. Guangdong province had the highest number of deaths at 35 followed by Henan and Yunnan provinces, both with 26 deaths, and Hunan province with 20 deaths. The main cause of death was illness or other unknown reasons. Accounting for 280 cases, with sudden illnesses, namely cardiovascular and cerebrovascular diseases being the main cause. This sparks an alarm for another epidemic in China. In decade, 
5.5 magnitude earthquake strikes Shandong at 2.33 on August 6, a 5.5 magnitude earthquake struck Pingyuan County, Deju City, Shandong Province. This is the largest earthquake to hit Shandong Province in nearly a decade, and parts of Beijing, located 300 kilometers away, also felt the tremors. The towns near the epicenter include Wangdeguai Town, Enqing Town, Wangzhuang Town, Haowangzhuang Town, Hainua Town, Laiji Town, Yajin Town, Qiankeo Town, and Siluzhuang Town. According to official reports, as of 7 No on August 6, a total of 126 houses collapsed in the affected area and 21 people were injured. According to the Beijing Strong Seismic Network, the highest seismic intensity recorded in Beijing was Ai in Tongshu District, with most areas of the city feeling the tremors. Tizens on Weibo commented, The earthquake in Shandong Zaibo was strong. It shook my bed directly, waking me up. I'm in Jinan and was awakened directly by the tremor. I dare not go back to sleep in Dixing District, Dijou City. The earthquake was strongly felt and family members ran out first thing. Another Nitaizen said, I was awakened by the earthquake at around 2 a.m. I instantly became alert and hurriedly put on clothes and went downstairs. Besides my phone, I didn't have time to grab anything else. When I ran downstairs, my feet felt weak and I couldn't stand steady. It's the first time in my life that I felt death so close. I hope everyone is safe tonight. At present, China Railway Beijing Group has initiated a level one emergency response, taking measures to halt trains on the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway, Beijing-Shanghai Line, beijing Kowloon Line, shijiazhuang Jinan High-Speed Railway, and shijiazhuang Dizhu Line. They are organizing a comprehensive inspection of related line equipment, and trains passing through these lines may experience cancellations or delays to varying degrees. It's worth noting that just one week before the earthquake in Dishu, Shandong Province, the region was affected by the impact of Super Typhoon Dezure, experiencing continuous heavy rainfall. Dishu and other areas received heavy to torrential rains, resulting in severe flooding in some places. Many houses were submerged to varying degrees, affecting the main structures of the buildings. The Anti-CP Infiltration Exhibition is held every week in Flushing, New York. Democratic activists are holding a Communist Party Century of Crimes photo exhibition every Sunday near the Flushing Library in New York's Chinese community. Recently, they added new content called the Anti-CP Infiltration Photo Exhibition, systematically presenting the recent charges brought by the U.S. Department of Justice against CCP agents, attracting many Chinese people to gather and observe. In the bustling streets of Flushing, Chinese people see familiar faces and names, and they can't help but stop and carefully examine the content, discussing it as they see it. These community leaders often appear in the limelight, in newspapers and on television, socializing and appearing confident. However, secretly, they have been carrying out assignments appointed by the CCP, acting as CCP agents for cross-border law enforcement overseas. They have been exposed and charged by the U.S. Department of Justice. The first display board first shows that the CCP has established more than 30 police stations overseas, attempting to suppress political opponents and dissidents and enforce cross-border laws. However, its international crackdown has been met with global vigilance and resistance. The second part of the second display board shows that N. Quanjong, the owner of the Ankeo Hotel in Flushing and president of the Ankea Group, is suspected of being involved in harassing and coercing U.S. residents to return to China, carrying out the CCP's fox hunt operation in the United States. He was arrested by the FBI and denied bail. The lower part of the second display board shows that on May 18, 2022, the U.S. Department of Justice and federal prosecutors charged Wang Shujun, Secretary General of the Commemoration of Hu Yeobang and Zhao Ziyang Foundation in New York, accusing him of using his established pro-democracy organization to secretly collect information about prominent activists and human rights leaders. The upper part of the third display board shows the first Chinese intelligence officer to be extradited to the U.S. for trial, Yan Jun, who was sentenced to 20 years in prison for espionage. He was the deputy division chief of China's state security ministry and engaged in commercial espionage activities. He was arrested in Belgium in 2018 and subsequently extradited to the U.S. for trial where he was convicted in November 2021 
becoming the first Chinese intelligence officer to be extradited and tried in the United States. These display boards attracted a large number of Chinese people to gather and observe. Chinese individual Shang Yonghong said after seeing the boards that the CCP is developing agents in the United States, and these agents come in various forms, including community leaders, army reservists, retired police officers, business people, and students who conceal their true background. The CCP's influence extends its threat to the United States, undermining American interests. The extent of the CCP's infiltration and intelligence theft in the U.S. is alarming and the U.S. still faces a daunting task in combating and preventing CCP infiltration. Chinese individual Lai Ching Song said in an interview that these cases have great educational significance for Chinese people, making them deeply reflect and reminding them not to collude with the CCP. The CCP is an evil regime, and what consequences and fate await those who act as CCP agents in the U.S. serve as a significant warning. China, Russia send warships close to Alaska, prompting strong a U.S. response. Last week, the Chinese Communist Party, CPO, and Russia conducted a joint naval operation near Alaska, prompting a strong response from the U.S. military. The U.S. dispatched destroyers and maritime patrol aircraft to counter the move. American experts stated that this appears to be the largest such fleet approaching the U.S. coastline. Dan Sullivan, a Republican federal senator from Alaska, received a briefing from us defense officials regarding the joint operation conducted by China and Russia, which involved 11 ships and took place off the southwest coast of Alaska. Sullivan stated that the S Navy eventually mobilized four destroyers to prompt the Chinese and Russian vessels to move away from us water. In a phone interview with Fox News Digital on Saturday, August 5, Sullivan expressed that in terms of the scale and scope of this joint naval task force between China and Russia, it's unprecedented. He further added, whether you live in Alaska like me or on the U.S. East Coast, having a very large surface action group from our two main adversaries, closely probing the U.S. coast is concerning. This firmly reinforces the view that we have entered a new era of dictatorial aggression led by the rulers in Beijing and Moscow and their aggressiveness is increasing, he continued. Sullivan also emphasized that compared to a similar incident that occurred in September of last year at the U.S. on a smaller scale, the U.S. response to this event has been significantly strengthened. On September 19, 2022, when a Chinese missile cruiser, along with two other Chinese and four Russian vessels, was spotted about 90 miles north of the Aleutian Islands, the U.S. only sent a Coast Guard vessel in response. The Wall Street Journal was the first to report on this joint action by China and Russia. The report stated that besides deploying four destroyers, the U.S. also dispatched a P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft to track the Chinese and Russian vessels. These ships came close to the Aleutian Islands but did not enter us territorial waters. Sullivan said, we've escalated significantly. For us destroyers and assets like the P-8 are closely monitoring this large-scale Chinese and Russian task force. So, this is a significant improvement. He added, there's a lot of naval power here, demonstrating America's resolve. A U.S. defense official stated that the four destroyers tracking the Chinese and Russian vessels were the U.S. John S. McCain, U.S. Ben Fold, U.S. John Finn, and U.S. Chung Hoon. John Aquilino, the commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command responsible for U.S. military operations in the Asia-Pacific region, stated last month that the U.S. has been monitoring the current Chinese and Russian patrol actions and trying to determine if they are heading to the Aleutian Islands, the Philippine Sea, Guam, or Hawaii. The nearly 10 billion funds for post-disaster reconstruction in Han have problems. Who moved the life-saving money of ordinary people? Amid the ongoing floods in the beijing tianjin hebei region of China, the Henan Provincial Audit Office recently revealed that funds for reconstruction following a catastrophic rainstorm two years ago have been misused, amounting to nearly billions of Chinese yuan. State media harshly criticized this, pointing out that these funds were not properly utilized for the benefit of the people. According to reports from Chinese media outlets, including Guangmingnet, the recent audit report by the Henan Provincial Audit Office has drawn attention to the reconstruction funds allocated after the unprecedented heavy rain and floods in July 2021. The report highlights various issues with the utilization of nearly billions of yuan in funds. In 73 counties and 242 projects, the quality of the engineering work was subpar, with an estimated expenditure of 3.346 billion yuan, 
24 projects were handed over for use without proper inspection, costing 563 million yuan. 22 projects falsely claimed to have started or completed, leading to an overreporting of 1.283 billion yuan. 24 projects faced delays in progress, but received appropriations of 3.127 billion yuan. Several counties and cities applied for reconstruction funds, totaling 375 million yuan, even though they were not affected by the disaster. Four counties and cities overreported 15 projects, totaling 432 million yuan. Nine counties, one provincial owned enterprise, and Weihui City's two county level financing platforms misused 450 million yuan in reconstruction funds. The report raises serious concerns about the handling of reconstruction funds, which were specifically allocated by the central government. People are questioning why these funds were not utilized for the benefit of the affected communities and who is responsible for this management. The situation has drawn particular attention from Chinese netizens amid the ongoing floods in the Beijing Tianjin Hebei region. They criticize the Hina authorities for their actions and express their frustration, implying that even in times of disaster, those in power prioritize their own interests over the well being of the people. During the floods in July 2021, Hainto province witnessed extensive devastation with an estimated 14.78 million people affected in 150 counties and cities. The disaster resulted in 398 deaths and missing persons and caused economic losses of 120.6 billion. Black Market Biolab Uncovered in California Linked to China a secret Chinese-owned biolab located in Reedley, California has raised serious concerns about biosecurity after an inspection by the city of Reedley fired up. The lab, operated by Prestige Biotech, Inc., C, was initially discovered in December 2022 after an anonymous complaint about a possible business operating in a supposedly vacant warehouse. During the inspection, Code Enforcement Officer Jesselyn Harper noticed a garden hose used for plumbing which violated building codes. The FBI was subsequently contacted to ensure safety, and on March 16, 2023, the Fresno County Public Health Department conducted a full inspection of the building. Apart from medical devices like COVID-19 and pregnancy test kits, several rooms in the warehouse contain numerous vessels of liquid and various apparatus. The inspection also revealed thousands of vials of unlabeled fluids and suspected biological material, including at least 20 infectious agents such as coronavirus, HIV, malaria, hepatitis, and herpes. The lab was found to be unlicensed, prompting the Fresno County Department of Public Health to destroy all the biological agents in the facility. Approximately 1,000 lab mice were also found in the facility, and nearly 200 of them were discovered dead in overcrowded and inhumane conditions. A veterinarian who inspected the facility authorized the humane euthanization and incineration of nearly 800 of the rodents. The lab's owner, Prestige Biotech, had previously operated under the name Universal Meditech, Inc., in Fresno, but relocated to Reedley after facing financial setbacks and eviction due to an electrical fire. At its Fresno facility, the company's business license was issued in California in March 2019, a year before the COVID-19 pandemic, the investigation involved various agencies, including the city, county, state, CDC, and FBI. The company's lack of cooperation with authorities resulted in abatement warrants. While public fears over the Biolab discovery are understandable, authorities have delayed issuing public statements due to ongoing investigations and the need for accurate information. Fresno City Councilman Gary Bredefeld criticized officials for not announcing the investigation earlier. Given the potential risks associated with the lab, and that is today's episode. If you found this video informative, please subscribe and ring a bell to get notification. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Use without